Welcome to the Fast Cat Podcast. I'm your host, Frank Overton. Some call me the big cat, and we have Coach Justin Bowes in the house. How are you, Justin? Same over here in Colorado. I have the AC off right now for sound quality, and uh, I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> uh, listeners, everyone, we have a special live episode today. We are live on our YouTube channel, and we are taking your questions. So uh, I know that if you're listening to this episode on the podcast, the live show has already ended. But for everyone over on the YouTube channel, submit your questions in the chat, and we are going to take them. Uh, we are going to talk about, uh, we're going to introduce you to Coach Cat. Coach Cat is your AI coach that's trained on our 20 years of experience, our proprietary data set, and it analyzes your data instantly the moment you finish a ride. It revises your training plan. Uh, it gives you custom workouts, and it answers all your training questions, oftentimes smarter, faster, and better than I would. Uh, coach Cat is me for a fraction of the price. And we're going to talk about uh, to the Fast Cat app, uh, you know, all the steps that we recommend and kind of walk you through how to get started training with the Fast Cat app and using Coach Cat like you would use a coach. How's that sound, Justin? Awesome. Uh, everyone, Justin has the tour up on uh, uh, up on stage. So periodically, no, no, because uh, periodically I'm going to interrupt you to ask you what, what what's going on. So listeners, um, and I know I'm not going to spoil it for anyone because this episode is not going to go live for another 24 hours on the podcast waves, but correct me if I'm wrong, there's 7K to go. Roglic just crashed. It's a sprint stage. Is this right, Justin? Oh, well, you know what? So they can't hear you because I was unable to figure out how to add you to the uh, YouTube live stream. Um, yeah. So actually, Justin, if you could reply to them in the in the chat, that's how it is. Um, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, so listeners, when you come on to the Fast Cat app, uh, so what we do, we walk you through our essentially our new athlete questionnaire. It's our onboarding. It's a it's a combination of what we're calling our custom plan builder. And so right off the bat, question number one, we ask you how much time you have to train. That's a question we've been asking athletes for two decades now, and we've broken it up into three answers. So there is, I can train four to eight hours a week. I can train eight to 12 hours a week, or I can 12, 12, or I can train 12 or more hours a week, roughly 12 to, to 16. And that is the difference between what we call our basic plan, our intermediate plan, and advanced plan. By far, our most popular plan is the intermediate level, eight to 12 hours a week. It's perfect for masters, cyclists, and also time crunched cyclists. What the intermediate level is not great at is obviously if you don't have eight to 12, but if you are over 50 years old, you are new, newer to cycling, the intermediate is going to be challenging for you. And that's why we have our eight to 12. I'm sorry, our our six to eight, sorry, four to eight hours a week. That's our basic level. So the basic level plan is for over 50. Uh, or if you that, that's just point blank all the time you have to train. One thing you can do in the Fast Cat app, you can move between basic and intermediate, intermediate back to basic. You can start off at basic, like over the winter, um, in the spring, maybe when you're on indoor training, and then you can move up to intermediate at any time when you're ready to pump up your your hours. All you have to do, go to the your library and then just reapply the plan. Uh, same start date, and then just choose intermediate instead of instead of basic. So bing, bang, boom, pretty easy. Now, if you uh, are young and you have more time to train, our advanced level plan is advanced. So do not recommend it for any over 50 athlete, not even me, not even, not even if I wasn't working and I had all day to, to recover. Um, it's just, uh, it's just an aggressive plan. And the recovery is balanced for younger riders. So one of the benefits of a properly 
design training plan that's built on our experience in the sports science is we balance the recovery and the training. So if, and it's, it's age-based and it's ability-based. And so if you're 55, you choose the advanced, you know, you probably could hang on for like a week or two and maybe at some point later down the road, you'd have to cry uncle. You just would not be able to recover from all that training. And then you'd have to, you know, revise the plan, but the best, uh, best course of action, choose the plan appropriate to how much time you have to train each week. And, uh, Dan Rice and Josh Adam, thanks for being here. Uh, you guys, if you have any questions, just let us know. Um, we're here to answer them. So the second question we will ask you during the onboarding process is, what are you training for? Uh, Justin, that's probably the most common question we ask, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what if you're not training for an event? What if you just want to get fit, get fast, increase your FTP? What if you just want to drop your friends on the group ride? Or what if you just want to like be able to hang on the group ride? So we ask you, what are you training for? And the answers are like next season. Um, that would be <clears throat> like if you're already looking towards 2025 or we ask you for an upcoming event. And that's what Justin was just talking about, like road, gravel, mountain, fondo, crit, time trial, all the things. Uh, and then the third answer is, you know, it's improve fitness and, and beat my friends. That's like, I'm not necessarily competitive or, you know, training for an event, but the group rides and just my enjoyment of my cycling with my friends is what I'm, I'm training for. And so that that's really, really important. Um, and then, so the third question we ask you is you, is what kind of event? So we have gravel, road, crit, time trial, triathlon, bondo, mountain bike. And then the fourth question is, when is it? And so I think loyal listeners will know we work backwards from when your goal event is. So your A event. So I can use Steamboat really, really well like this week because my Steamboat Gravel plan began this past Monday, uh, July 8th. The Steamboat Gravel event is August 18th. Um, so if you you enter August 18th and then what uh, our custom plan builder will present to you is, hey, here's our Steamboat Gravel plan. And would you like to apply this to your training calendar? You're going to answer yes. And then that plan uh, is entered into your uh, training calendar. And then you have a step-by-step, day-by-day, extremely specific what to do uh, for your training, when to rest, uh, when to do intervals, when to do endurance rides, uh, when to do yoga, when to uh, do foundations. I was just riding with a rider yesterday, Justin, and we were talking about Steamboat, and he was telling me last year his back gave out. And I said, well, I have just the fix for you. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, if you can see me on YouTube, when you're sitting on that saddle right there and you're riding over rough terrain, you're riding on a jackhammer. And you know what takes all the shock is your back and you got to strengthen it up. And uh, these long gravel races are notorious for wrecking your back. And so the Dr. Eric Goodman Foundation's routine that we prescribe in our training plans every Monday and Friday. It's 12 minutes. Do it every day. No back pain ever is the famous quote. It strengthens your back. And basically, you won't have to slow down uh, later in the race uh, on account of your back. So that's that's the goal. And it, I have put that, I have been a, a, a star athlete for that and a not a star athlete. So like when I did the BWR Arizona this year, I've been lazy and holy cow, all the whoopty doos on that course, I like had to ride slower. So it was painful just on account of my back. So everyone do your, do your foundations routine. 
you know, what we provide is more than just on the bike workouts. It's all the things you should do. And that includes nutrition. So we'll get to the nutrition here in a second. Um, awesome. So after that, so say you're not training for, for steamboat, for example, say you're training for an event, um, say it's in October. Um, and so you say gravel October, and let's say that's like 10, 10, let's say it's 14 weeks. How many weeks is it till October? <laughs> I can't do that in my, my head. Um, but what we're going to do is, uh, say it's like a road race or a Fondo. We're going to, uh, the custom plan builder is going to apply the appropriate amount of sweet spot training, uh, coupled with the Fondo plan. And it's going to pair those together. So you do the right amount of each. Maybe you do two weeks of climbing, six weeks of our sweet spot part three plan, maybe part four. And then you do six weeks of our, of our Fondo plan. So basically the custom plan builder splices uh, these phases of training together for you, puts it on your, your training calendar based on your goal event, how much time you have to train, and then working backwards from, from when that goal event is. And then um, when you get done with your goal event, uh, just go through the, the plan builder again, and uh, you can move on to your next A event, and maybe next year at this point in, in the season. What did I miss, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Dan Rice, Dan Rice asks, in uh, the YouTube comments, is the platform optimized for cycling or does it work for other sports like triathlon? Dan, we have very good uh, plans, the triathlon plans in, uh, in the training library. And so what you want to do is apply those plans and then follow the multi-sport plans. We have uh, sprint triathlon plans. We have Olympic distance plans and we have half Ironman plans and full length Ironman uh, plans. And so, uh, Dan, you're asking, repeat what Justin says. Sorry for the, the technical parts, but basically uh, that's, that's, the, that's the answer for triathlon. And then so our platform right now is optimized for your cycling data. So you can still push your swim and your runs up. But right now, we uh, Coach Cat is trained on analyzing your cycling data. And this is actually a good point. Coming down the pipe is sport-specific thresholds. Once we have sport-specific thresholds, such as your running threshold, then Coach Cat will be able to speak to your run data, uh, give you feedback on that. But the best thing that Coach Cat can do right now is help you and guide you through your training. And so, like, if you can't do a swim one morning, you can ask Coach Cat, "I miss my swim workout, or I can't do it. I don't have time." Can you help me revise my plan? And that's like the biggest thing that that Coach Cat can help you do with regards to your your triathlon training. Great question. So keep them coming, everyone. All right, let's move on to performing workouts. This is a big one. Um, we are going to talk about doing your workouts indoors or outdoors. We're going to talk about performing them manually versus sending them to your device. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of sending them to Zwift or just doing the manual on any virtual training platform. Obviously, you can send all your workouts to Wahoo, your Wahoo or your Garmin or your Hammerhead. Um, we are waiting on Zwift to share their training API 
with his Hello Zwift friends. Um, I don't think they will be upset if I say they move as slow as the Titanic. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there's other platforms out there. And so, you know, Zwift is the most popular one, but we have had some listeners uh, ask for IndieVelo. And we'll certainly give that to you all. Uh, Ruby is a really popular one. Um, lately, we've also been getting requests from my whoosh. Um, yeah. So, you know, we'll be like the Switzerland, uh, for indoor platforms. We want you to be able to do your fast cat workout wherever you want to. My favorite place to do my workout, Justin is outdoors. And, uh, me personally, I don't like the workout export feature. Um, I think, uh, virtual platforms and and the workout export has made athletes lazy a little bit because uh, I'm an old timer and I'm, I'm not a Luddite. Uh, I'm an innovator and I'm on the, the bleeding edge of, of technology and everything. However, when I go out and I want to do my sweet spot three by 10, you know, and it's a 20 minute warm up and then a 10 minute sweet spot at interval and a five minute recovery period, I do not use the workout export. And the reason why is I don't want to, so I, I want to ride over to where I'm going to do my intervals. And then I don't want to have this like countdown timer says you need to begin and I'm not where I want to be yet. So there's that. But also I know my sweet spot is 252 watts to 284 watts. Rolls off my tongue. If you want it to make it easier to, no, don't just round it down or up to the multiple of 10, 250 to 280. And so everyone go to, they say cycling is a cerebral sport. This is what we're talking about. Go, once you have your FTP set, go into your profile, go to training zones, and then just look at your training zones. The ranges are there. Um, you should reference uh, what uh, what training zone you're targeting in your intervals on a particular day. And then you sh that number should roll off your tongue. Before the workout export feature, Justin, we coached plenty of athletes and we noticed, you know, probably around 2013, 14, right before the workout builder came out, athletes were starting to write their intervals on their hands. And then some would even write it on pieces of tape and put it on the, uh, you know, the stem of the handlebar. And what was happening is coaches were making these workouts way too complicated. They, you know, over unders and crisscrosses, there's a time and a place for those, but you know, all these like sprint here and, and five minute max effort here. That's like, we don't design our training that way. Uh, training should be simple, easy, and easy to follow. So anyway, three by 10 fundamental, you know, uh, go out and do your workout. So, uh, yeah, that's how I, uh, kind of um, think of the simplicity and just doing your workouts manually. So um, Dan Rice asks, tri triathlon function. So Dan, triathlon functionality is, is available for cycling. Um, and then swimming, there's not much data. So just do your swim. By and large, everyone, if you follow a plan, you will get faster and you don't need all this tech uh, to, to do it. It sure is nice, but all you have to do is just do the workouts. We, we write out in the instructions how to do your workout. And all you have to do is go out and do it. A lot of the data has also made us a little bit lazy and, and you're thinking that, uh, you know, you need to export this and that, but um, yeah, all you have to do is follow the plan. Uh, Anthony asks, pretty sure if you ask Andy Velo, we could have this in a week. You are right. I actually had a phone call with George a couple weeks ago. Very nice fella. Everyone that's uh, listening out there that doesn't know who or what we are talking about, IndieVelo is a new virtual training platform. Uh, it's designed by uh, a fellow by the name of George. He is a physicist by training, and he has figured out how to make drafting feel lifelike in a virtual platform. And that is their like claim to fame. And the amazing thing about IndieVelo is George has done all this himself, and it's they only started doing it last summer, so they've been live for about a year now, and definitely looking forward to seeing what uh, has what's coming down the pipe with with them. And you're right, Anthony George did share uh, 
their API with us, and we have put that on our product roadmap. So we're going to bring that to you all before the indoor riding season starts this fall. But right now, also from a coaching standpoint, we think you should be outside right now. Uh, you know, so so whenever we get questions about doing your workouts on Zwift in the middle of the summer, we understand if you live in an urban area where it's not safe to ride your bike or or you just need a super time efficient workout. But what we don't want you to do is to get lazy and do your all your workouts indoors because a lot of you are training for these very hard events and endurance is, is key. You, you need to ride longer. And what we see is athletes, they only ride one hour because that's all they can take on the, the trainer. You need to really, you know, if you're doing the intermediate plan, like we, we talked about, but the rides are like between 75 minutes and 90, 90 minutes, two hours on occasion. So cycling is most of these events we're training for is an endurance sport. You need to ride endurance, you know, in order to do eight to 12 hours per week, you got to get off the trainer, get outdoors. It's summertime, everyone, um, you know, ride your bike outside and we're teaching you how to do it. Uh, so um, you don't need to necessarily do it on, on Zwift. Now, with that said, like I was saying, urban area, you know, like I was joking with Lauren DeCrescenzo just the other week. She lived in the middle of Atlanta, like a concrete jungle just a not safe, you know, to ride your bike outside on some occasions. And that's a great example of using Zwift, time efficient. I was talking with another athlete. We were talking about atomic habits and what atomic habits is, is lowering as much friction as possible to actually doing the thing. And so, you know, Zwift and all virtual platforms are a wonderful atomic habit because you got your bike set up, you're ready to go. You can get on at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., jam out your time efficient workout, get off, eat, shower, go to work, you know, do, do all the things. But when you have more time to train, um, what we're just saying is, yeah, ride your bike outside. So, uh, that's a long winded way of, uh, talking about, uh, workouts like that. So Anthony also says, FastCAD gave me an FTP increase this week. That is much higher than intervals. 398 versus 382. How does your calculation differ? I'm a little scared to accept the new FastCat FTP. Um, let's see how to answer that. So 398, man, you should be racing in the Tour de France. That's uh, that's really good, Anthony. Uh, so first of all, I don't know how much you weigh, but power to weight, we'd want to factor that in. Um, much higher than intervals. Uh, so... so our auto FTP detection works based on your 20 minute or greater power output. And so when you set a 20 minute power output, that's greater than any other 20 minute power output. Uh, it, it, uh, it basically, that's a new FTP. And then we calculate it based on minus 5%. And then that's your FTP. And we put that into your training zones. If you elect to accept it. Um, Anthony. Uh, okay. Awesome. So, Oh, I think also if you if you did it on the data, the, the only thing you need to check is the integrity of your data. Uh, did you do it on one power meter and then you're training on a different power meter? I was talking with an athlete on Strava about this earlier in the week, and it turns out they had done one test outdoors and another test indoors. Guess what, folks? That's not the same. It's apples to oranges. And so when you test, uh, you want to do apples to apples, same power meter, generally the same method of testing, like indoors. Indoors to indoors is apples to apples um, yeah. and, 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 and everything. So, Anthony, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to answer your question live, uh, but trust your data if you believe in it. Uh, when you set a new threshold, guess what? Your intervals are harder. Getting faster is harder. you got to continue to push yourself. Um, this other athlete I was talking about, he was saying, wow, that it was, it's really hard to get up into my VO2. I'm like, yeah, VO2s are hard. Um, so you get a new threshold, all your intervals are hard, uh, harder. So yeah, just embrace the, the new challenge, dig in, do your work, uh, and, and you're going to continue to, to get faster. 
Um, Anthony, if that didn't answer your question entirely, feel free to uh, reach out into the app. Everyone, um, part of the onboarding process, there is a chat box in the upper right of the app, and you can connect with a fast cat coach at any time. We'll get back to you in five minutes, 10 minutes or less. I believe our, our coach Elliot is on deck right now. Is that right, Justin? I think he is. Uh, um, yeah. And then I'm in there periodically throughout the day, especially in the morning and in the evenings. I take take a poll. Um, and yeah, we'll answer you. And so also you can ask Coach Cat. If you have any question along the way, just go to the chat window of your latest rod or your latest uh, recovery workout and you can ask any question. And if you want a second opinion from a real person, just hit that chat box in the in the upper right. And honestly, uh, Coach Cat is going to give you an answer better than me. Uh, smarter, faster, better. You don't have to wait for us to reply. You can just rapid fire, uh, have a dialogue back, back and back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you, Justin, real quick, just because the people on YouTube can't hear you. Um, also, I want to tell Anthony, uh, we are not waiting on Zwift. Uh, we have to wait on Zwift. We, they have not released their training API to us. And so trust me, uh, this is something we've been asking for them for over a year. Uh, it is not our, we're not dragging our feet here for you, buddy. We are, uh, it, it, like, as soon as they share it with us, we're going to uh, code it out in like a week's time and give it to you. So in the meantime, I'm telling you, just use your workout timer and your knowledge of your zones to pedal harder or easier. You may do that on Zwift. You may do that on Indie Velo. You may do it outdoors. This is what we're talking about. You just need a workout timer, knowledge of your zones, pedal harder or easier, use your real-time power uh, output feedback, and you don't need to rely on this workout export feature. You get the ultimate freedom. You can go harder if you're feeling great. You can back off if you're not feeling it on a particular day. You can, I, I used to, when the workout export feature came along, Justin, I used to tell athletes, never let software tell you how you feel and restrict you. And my best example of this is time trialing. Nah, like everyone wanted to know what their number was for pacing. Cause like when power came out, everyone thought it had this magic like pacing. And it's like, no man, just go as hard as you can and feel it. And if you can go harder, do. And, and it, like everyone was like, oh, I should pace my time trial at 282 Watts. And it was like, no. So it's the same way when your intervals, especially your full gas ones, especially when you're doing zone four and five and six intervals, the erg mode, I hate it for that. You, you guys got to feel it and you can do better intervals training that way without using the erg mode. So I guess we've gone down the, the erg mode uh, bashing uh, portion of this podcast, but that's why you can do better uh, by feeling your workout and you can learn more. And when you understand that you can probably do more than maybe what your intervals in the erg mode calls for, then you're going to break through and you're going to, uh, like really unlock a lot of, a lot of improvement and possibly be able to use that out on the, the race race course, like to understand that you can do 130% for three minutes um, you know, in a race and get in that breakaway, that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm.
Yeah. 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 That's right. You know, another great example is Tabata intervals and Tabata intervals are those, you know, for everyone out there, it's like 20 seconds on 10 seconds off eight reps or 40 seconds on 20 seconds on eight reps. Maybe you could do six reps, but they're, they're hard and you essentially go to failure during each set. And if you're on the erg mode, it's like, you can't even complete the interval set. So because we prescribe Tabata's at 170% of your FTP and you it's, they're really hard. And by like rep five, six, and seven, you are really struggling to hold 170. And if you're on erg mode and, and it holds you at that, you know, you're forced to pedal like 40, 30, 20 RPMs, and then it, you just can't do it. So you got to turn the erg mode off for the Tabata's. And honestly, I think it's a cruel and unusual punishment to have athletes do Tabata's on the indoor trainer. <laughs> I mean, you got to get outside for those bad boys. They, they're they hard and, and doing them outside and to feel the acceleration uh, and the wind in your face and the power uh, is the best way to do intervals. It, like the best place to do intervals is in my opinion, a, like pretty much a flat road, maybe 1% grade. That's, that's it. Don't do it downhill. Sometimes flat roads are tough because you get two on top of the gear and you kind of spin it up and the power falls when you're happening, when it's happening. But by and large, like a very shallow grade, like 1% or, or less. And, uh, but yeah, try not to do Tabata's indoors, but if you have to, that that's fine. Just turn the erg mode off. Yeah. Um, all right. So we are still talking about doing your workouts, uh, indoors or outdoors performing workouts. You know, one other thing I would want to mention is our uh, training methodology, our coaching methodology is some days you're going to do structured intervals. Some day you're going to do endurance rides. And when you do endurance rides, that's generally like zone two, 1.5 hours. You don't need to export a workout for that. You just know, Hey, my zone two is 112 to, you know, uh, 140 Watts or, or by heart rate, hundred, you know, 70% of your heart rate plus or minus. And, um, and then on the weekends, we very rarely prescribe intervals. That's when we have athletes get in their endurance training. We have a lot of, uh, simulation rides if you've been listening to the podcast lately or we give ots rides and ots rides are the ultimate freedom where we let athletes ride in zones two through sweet spot uh sometimes and we ask them to achieve a certain amount of work so like 150 ots or 200 ots and a lot of that ots is optimized training stress it's a metric based on the duration times the intensity of your training from your power or heart rate data. And what I like about OTS is we can prescribe endurance sessions uh, based on the amount of work we want you to do. And we know from analyzing power data and heart rate data uh, from these events, like I can tell you if you do such and such Fondo, you're going to do a 350 OTS. And so we want to have you do that in training. Or if you do the unbound 100 that's going to be an ots of 400 for for example and so we prescribe training in that there's no intervals but you got to go out there and do the work and uh it's really nice it's fun you can do them on a group ride with folks you can do them solo by yourself flat terrain hilly terrain there's a lot of freedom and flexibility that i believe is super important uh for training and uh that's like that's how we prescribe uh yeah, the the endurance side. So there's that. There's nothing to export in that. Even if you know, we do. Coach Jake has got a great video on our YouTube channel of doing a sweet spot 200 OTS ride on Zwift. And uh, yeah, he did it. Uh, and a lot of athletes do. And you you know, there's nothing to export. It's just it really comes down to sitting on the sitting on the thing and doing the work for that period of time. Um, a lot of training just comes down to work and time. You just got to put your time in. It's not complicated. And Jake makes it all funny because uh, 
Jake is Jake, but uh, yeah, you just, I think uh, his 200 OTS ride took him, uh, I think it was like two and a half, three hours. And the time goes, passes quicker, the harder you ride, but the harder you ride, the more hard it is mentally. Uh, so there's a, there's a balance and that's when YouTube or Netflix or Spotify or whatever entertainment helps you. Um, oh yeah. So, uh, for a zone two outdoor ride, how much does it matter if you have zone one, zone three, or sweet spot mixed in if the average ends up in zone two? Uh, yeah, great question. So I think, uh, there's two answers. Uh, there's the five gold star way, it, you know, if you just do your best to, you know, keep your power within your zone two. So your zone two is between 170 and 210 watts. Th that's like a great way. But realistically, like if you go up a little undulation or downhill, you don't want to like slow down on account of not exceeding 210 watts. It's okay if you go up higher for one or two or three seconds. That's just how power is uh, realistically. And it's so different than the, you know, riding on the indoor trainer. So um, it's okay if you even get up in to zone four, five, and six, just for a little bit, you know, just to carry your momentum. You're not going to slow down in a race uh, because you're trying to stay within a particular zone. That's not how cycling works. And that's where cycling in the real world is different than you know, zone-based training. So um, it's okay. Power is going to bounce all over the place, especially in a, even in a zone two ride. Um, but as long as you don't like, you know, stay on the gas and sustain like, you know, sweet spot for 10, 20, 30 seconds, um, it's totally, totally okay. Same way with going down a, down a hill, because unless you live in a super duper flat area, uh, it's just kind of the nature of training outdoors. And then everyone, uh, I have had athletes say I'm training indoors so I can do my zone two workout. Perfect. It's like, no, 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 no. Like there's no such thing as perfect zone two, just because you stayed between the high and the low range of your, your zone two. It's, it's totally okay. So, um, I do zone two rides in Colorado, Justin, and you come back and it's the, the power file is it bounces all over the place and it's, but what you want is kind of like what Anthony suggested is at the end of the day, you, the, the time that you were trying to stay in zone two actually averaged out and fell within that. And if that's the case, then yes, you've done your zone two ride successfully. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Average it out, everyone. Shelby Nestor asks, is it in the future plans to have Fast Cat, Coach Cat, remember your history? As an example, I had a wreck and took a week off from riding. I had to remind Fast Cat that I was coming off the injured list. Shelby, great question. The answer is yes, and it is happening actually quite soon. What um, everyone, what Shelby is, is referencing is what's called memory in, in AI. And, uh, we are giving coach cat the ability to remember that you did have a wreck last week, or you got sick or you, uh, were injured or that you, on the other hand, you know, were crushing it in, in your training. Like you had a, you had a set a new FTP. Um, and so the way that we're going to do that is with a new 2.0 UX that's coming down the pipe uh, very soon. 
And what that we're basically going to take all your threads, Shelby, and they're going to live in, in one thread. So imagine like your text messages and, you know, you can scroll back in the history of your text messages and see what you were, you know, saying like four weeks ago, six weeks ago. Um, that's, that's how we're going to give coach cat the ability to remember, uh, that you did have a wreck last week and then, um, give you coaching advice in the context of what, what you're asking for. So, um, for right now, apologies. You may, Coach Cat is just not smart enough to remember. That's a kind of a, a easy way to kind of put it right now. So Shelby, you just have to keep reminding Coach Cat of that for the for the time being. Um, but it's uh, being coded in uh, real real soon. But yeah, great question. Keep them coming, everyone. Um, let's move on past performance performing workouts. But I think like the the biggest thing is. Don't let technology hold you back from just simply following the plan. You can go old school and old school is better school in, in many, many, many cases. Um, all right. Let's talk about using Coach Cat uh, refer like real, real quick. So um, everyone, we covered step number one is to use the custom plan builder. Uh, get your custom plan, apply that, and then use Coach Cat to guide you along the way. Um, what Coach Cat can do is obviously you're going to get your data an analyzed instantly. This is something I've done close to a million times over the past 20 years. And I took all those responses of coupled with the power data and I used that to train the model to make Coach Cat super smart and the ability to give you instant data analysis, just like I would, but instantaneously without having to pay the price of hiring me as your coach. And so that's the first thing you get. Additionally, if you have a wearable, if you have an Apple Watch, an Aura Ring, a Whoop, a Garmin smartwatch that records sleep and HRV, every morning you're going to get a recovery analysis uh, from Coach Cat. They're going to analyze your sleep and your HRV. They're going to reference it to your sleep baseline, your HRV baseline. And then if you're high or low, uh, Coach Cat is going to say, do you want a harder workout? Do you want an easier workout? How are you feeling today? And it gives you the opportunity to match your workout to your recovery. Um, and so we all know that when you're pushing the envelope and trying to train hard, sometimes we don't recover as much as we want to. And then you need to modify your plan downstream. This is the first attempt to take how much you recovered based on how much you've been training and then revise the, the plan. So use Coach Cat that way. If you don't have a, like a wearable, it's okay. Just keep trying to follow the plan, but be flexible within your, uh, you know, based on how you're feeling. You can go into your workout uh, from the previous day and type in, Coach Cat, I don't feel that well today. I'm feeling a little tired. What should I do? And then you're going to get advice. And Justin, that's kind of like what we do as coaches. Uh, but a lot of times we as coaches, you know, because we're real people and we don't, we keep bankers hours, everyone. We work Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five. And on Saturday morning, oftentimes when you need this information the most, you know, it's not like we're not at work. Uh, we're not in the office. And um, yeah, so, so I mean, so this is the advantage of, of having Coach Cat. You, you get instant uh, feedback uh, right away, and you don't have to worry about upsetting your coach. I used to get – in Colorado, it used to blizzard, and oftentimes you know, we'd spend all Friday afternoon revising training plans from the weekend when we had like these big, long endurance rides planned. And, I mean, it was a whole thing. You know? And sometimes, sometimes we'd be like, all right, let's keep the plan the same because maybe it's not going to blizzard. And – Sure enough, it blizzarded overnight and then you'd wake up to like a foot of snow and then you wind up working a few hours on Saturday morning revising training plans. Uh, this is this is the advantage of of Coach Cat. You get that instant revision uh, based on what's going on. And everyone, eventually we're going to uh, code in uh, some weather APIs and we're going to be able to prompt you, hey, there's a foot of snow outside. Here's your substitute workout uh, for Zwift because you can't ride outside today. Uh, so we're changing it up for you. It's totally within our um, product roadmap. 
uh, easy. Same way with air quality. Like the Crusher and the Tusher got canceled this weekend due to a forest fire. Feel really sorry for all the athletes that train their patooties off for that. But, you know, remember a couple years ago in California, the fires were really bad and people couldn't exercise outdoors and everyone's wearing masks. But um, we can plug in to the weather uh, AQI index and basically be able to tell athletes, don't train outside. Here's your substitute indoor uh, workout. That's also, that's happening. Um, Zedba DA says, my HRV today was really high. I read super high HRV can be the result of tiredness, especially when HR heart rate is low. It looks like Coach Cat treats higher HRV always as a sign of recovery. Well, I think, Zeba, what Coach Cat is trained on is mostly your HRV baseline. And so we're going to establish a rolling seven-day HRV baseline because we know one extra high reading or one extra low reading does not necessarily mean you should train what you're, you know, change what you're doing uh on that particular day. We've all had great races uh, with high or low HRV. So you can't let a single reading high or low really dictate what uh, you should and should not do that day. Really, um, it's listen to your body. If you're trending lower day after day after day, Coach Cat is trained on that to say, hey, what's up? What What's going on? Let's back off your, your training. Similarly, if you're trending upwards, Coach Cat is going to be able to say, wow, you're recovering really, really well. Um, let's it give you the green light to maybe train harder or go longer for, for your endurance ride. So Zebda, what I would encourage you to do is to uh, ask your question to Coach Cat right there in that recovery analysis that you got and, and ask the specific question, especially in in reference to what you want to do today. And it's like, can you do the workout on your, on your training plan? Or maybe, you know, should I train harder, longer, or should I change the workout or should I um, train less? Uh, so forth. So um, HRV can be a result of tiredness. You kind of never know. Um, so anyway, um, don't read too much into it is I guess another way of answering that question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Also to interrupt a little bit, uh, sometimes folks, if you are racing or training for an event, you don't have the option to say, 
I don't feel good today. You got to just ignore your HRV. And we've all all had like poor nights of sleep just because you're so anxious about the race. Guess what? You just got to let that roll off your shoulder and you got to like pull up your pants and, you know, deliver on, on race day, independent of what your wearable data data says. I remember a race this Norva national in West Virginia, Justin, and two things were going on. Three things. Number one, it was pouring rain all night. We had a tin roof. And so you could hear the rain pitter patter all night. Normally that's a pleasant sound, but when you're thinking about how slick the roots are going to be the next morning, I just, I could not sleep. The second thing that happened was uh, the race was at 8 a.m. East Coast time, and I was on Colorado time, so the race was at 6 a.m. And then the other thing, uh, I was I was young in my racing career, and I was like, you know, you need to eat three hours before, four hours before. Gosh darn it, if I didn't get up at 2 a.m. Colorado time to eat my breakfast and then sit back in bed listening to the rain. And anyway, I had a terrible night's sleep. But um, actually raced pretty well uh, physiologically. I was, yeah. So if I had listened to my uh, wearable on that particular day, I would have, they would have told me to go home. But uh, yeah, you just got Yeah. Yeah. I think whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Whoop has a new feature uh, that you can turn off those metrics uh, for race day. Uh, they, it was like, I think athletes were, they were like trying to protect athletes from getting anxious. And so you can, there's like a feature to turn that off. Um, Zebda asks, I did my FTP test two weeks ago at the end of 16 weeks of sweet spot plan, went to the climbing plan. I'm not very fresh. I struggle with holding more than hundred percent FTP. Can it be a result of doing sweet spot for 16 weeks and no Zone five. I don't think so, Zebda. I think it's a function of you not feeling very fresh. So let's get you to feel fresh. So let's double down on your recovery. It's not that the plan is bad. I think your recovery is not up to par. So concentrate on your sleep. Try to get 15 to 30 more minutes of sleep for the next week. Uh, concentrate on your uh, nutrition. Um, also, if necessary, take an extra recovery day. Also, uh, make sure you're not doing too much um, from your plan. But um, it's not really a function of the training per se. It's generally a function of uh, the lack of recovery. So uh, get recovered, get fresh, and then bust out those watts. And yes, those watts are now harder now that you've set your FTP higher. Um, all right, uh, just continuing on with what Coach Cat can do. So we covered the custom plan builder. Uh, can revise your training plan. You know, it's the Mike Tyson quote, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face and everyone has the best intentions of following the plan. But yeah, you got work, you got kids, you got uh, weather, you got fatigue, you got injuries, getting sick, uh, you know, hey, you're, you had a flat tire on your bike and you spent all the time that you had to train fixing your bike. Now, what do you do? And so that's where Coach Cap helps, uh, you know, for when life punches you in the face. Also, custom workouts. If you're not following a plan or you don't want to, you can wake up and say, I have one hour to train today and I would like to do some threshold workouts. Can you give me a workout? And Coach Cat will give that workout to you, put it on your training calendar, and uh, you can go do it. You can go send it to your Garmin or your Wahoo or your Hammerhead if that's what uh, you're into. Um, eventually you'll be able to send that to your virtual training platform of your choice. And it's pretty awesome like that. So say, this is what we call the no training plan training solution, uh, which is really great in the summertime when we have group rides and events. Speaking of events, if you have a race, you can tell coach cat, I have a race on Saturday, you know, July 14th. Can you put that on my calendar? And the coach cat will. And then you can also say, what should I do leading up to that? And Coach Cat will give you openers on Friday, a rest day on Thursday. It'll work backwards from that. It'll help you revise your plan. Um, if you have a four-day work trip, um, Coach Cat, I have a four-day work trip on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Can you help me revise my plan? That's 
that's a benefit. But but going back to the no training plan training solution. So say you have a group ride on Wednesday and Saturday. Wednesday is a short one. It's fairly hard. Saturday is a longer endurance one. You know that, or Coach Cat knows, you're going to take Monday and Friday off. You're probably going to ride medium to easy on Tuesday. You might do zone two on Thursday and zone two on Sunday. That's just a hypothetical example. But Coach Cat will help you design uh, your own training plan on a day-by-day basis or a week-by-week or you can plan ahead as much as you want. And that's that custom uh, planning that, that Coach Cat will help you do. Um, also, uh, we talked a little bit about auto FTP detection. Um, you have to go, you have to exceed your previous, previous values. Um, it won't, right now we don't do historical uh, detection yet. Uh, that's coming. But if you're, FTP is 250 and you crack out a 270 watt, 20 minute power output. We're going to say, Hey, good job. Point that out to you. Calculate your new FTP, put it in your training zones. And then now your interval training is harder. So uh, that's what coach cat will do for you there. Um, Yeah. Uh, All right. I was just reading. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and we have a really good training tip on our website. It's basically like a, a FAQ frequently asked questions of how to use coach cat. It's, uh, just go over to uh, fastcatcoaching.com, go to training tips and then, um, look at, look for the, uh, uh, training tip titled using coach cat. Um, but yeah, coach cat helps you, you know, all sorts of things. If, what if I miss a workout? What if I get, sick or injured? Uh, can you add races to my calendar or vacations or rest days? Um, you know, you know, like I miss my workout. That's like a, you know, really good use case because life happens. Um, let's move on. We're coming up on an hour, but let's, uh, let's finish with data handling and, um, everyone out there in podcast land, we will do a episode like this again. We'll do, uh, an ask a fast cat, episode coming up here real soon. I think we're at number 28. Um, that, that'll be the next one. Uh, but we'll also, I really like this YouTube format. So we just need to get uh, Justin uh, access so that people on the YouTube can hear him too. Uh, Anthony asks, will the app notice if a router hasn't been performing in a decrease in FTP? Um, it's really kind of, you know, the way to answer that question is, um, is when we say been when a router hasn't been performing, I mean, first of all, you have to define that. Like, what does that, what has not been performing well mean? I mean, we know when you haven't been following your plan, that's that's one way of not been performing. But what, what if your power output is lower? I think that's what you're talking about, um, a decrease in, in FTP. Um it's also important to understand what the technology can and, and can't do. Uh, so until you test again, uh, no technology is going to be able to tell you if your FTP has decreased. You may feel it, um, but you you need to test again. And so if you tested at 300 watts in April and you tested again, all things can you know the same, and you tested it at 280 watts, yeah, your FTP went down. Uh, simple as that. And then you want to look at why. Uh, and so, um, yeah, that, that's the answer. I think right there would identify an FTP decrease. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm just thinking through the, all the scenarios there, but yeah, yeah. You don't really need AI to do that. Honestly, if you do 300 and then you do 280, that's your answer. Your FTP decreased more or less. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, based on like your intervals per se. Yeah. Not at the current moment um eventually we will get to that. I think what you can also 
do is look at your uh, power to heart rate ratios. You know, if you're doing, if we know your power, your threshold heart rate is 160 beats per minute, and you're doing only making like sweet spot power at 160 beats per minute, but previously that was your threshold power, that would be one indication that your FTP has decreased. The other indication is like how that power feels. Did it feel harder? Then maybe your FTP has decreased. And a lot of what we do as coaches, when we have athletes uh, take breaks or you know resume training in the off season again, we'll arbitrarily decrease the FTP. Um, just when I say arbitrarily, it's like we don't test for that. I would never have an athlete do a test just to know that their FTP decreased. That's just cruel and unusual punishment. It's not really productive. Just make it lower. Uh, it's as simple as that. So. Um, we'll, we'll do that as coaches and, and eventually we don't really need to, I never have athletes test down. Um, uh, so, but yeah, eventually we can probably correlate like your training load and training consistency to like an arbitrarily lower FTP just to get you in the ballpark and serve as a benchmark of where to move, improve upon moving forward. But like, if you take two months off, Yes, your FTP has decreased. How much? We'll assign a, a lower number, and then you'll have a number to measure your improvement from from there. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's wrap it up here um, with with data. So super quick. You know, um, a lot of athletes come on. You know, we do not have an integration of Training Peaks. Unfortunately, I wish we did. We asked them for it. Uh, they said no. Um, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, the things that, that we tell athletes, there's a bunch of things that you can, like, you don't want to just go over and look at your plan on training peaks because you're missing out on a lot of features that, that the fast cat app has. Number one, we just came out with the desktop. So you got, you know, a full calendar view of four weeks or more. You can scroll down. It's very easy. Um, you know, you don't get the custom plan builder and training peaks. You, you know, you, we can send workouts to your device, just like training peaks. The only thing we can't do right now is send it to Zwift. We have a workaround for that and so forth. But the biggest thing you don't get with training peaks is coach cat. And so you want to stay on the, the fast cat app for that. Um, maybe over time, our friends over at training peaks uh, will grant us an integration and we'll certainly uh, give it to you all uh, as soon as that is granted. Um, but yeah, so for the moment, we we have an Apple Watch integration. So unfortunately, so Apple Watch is a good uh, wearable device. That's why we integrated it with, with the FastCat app. We recorded a podcast on it. We've got a training tip on our website about it. We are able to take in your sleep and your HRV, Apple Health, uh, Apple Watch activities. What we can't do, unfortunately, not yet, uh, but it's going to happen real soon, is record your activities. Um, there's a lot of data that Apple watch records and, uh, our backend is a little overwhelmed when we get all that activity. So we had to just really, uh, choose sleep and HRV. But if you go out and you do a run or you do a swim or a ride and you record that activity with your Apple watch, yes, we will be able to take that in, uh, soon, but not yet. We don't have a Peloton integration yet. Uh, same way with Strava. Um, but those are all things on, on the roadmap, uh, for sure. What's another integration we don't have, but we, we, we thought of Justin, I, in case I'm forgetting any. Yeah. Koros, the new computer. Yeah. Um, sweet. So, so what else? So we're compatible with, uh, Apple Watch, Whoop, Aura, Garmin smartwatches. Um, and then for bike computers, the three big ones, Garmin, uh, Wahoo, uh, Hammerhead. We can pull and push data for all three of those devices. So in other words, we can pull data down and then you can do your workouts on th those devices directly from the FastCat um, app. Just go to your workout, open it up, click send to device and then it'll appear on your uh, device on that particular day. Like I was saying earlier in the podcast, I do all that manually. I don't like to have this countdown timer and I know my zones and it's easy as that. Um, but th nevertheless, if, if that's like a, a feature that you want to have. 
Um, that covers data handling. And you know what? I think that's a good, good place to stop. What do you think, Justin? Super. Well, everyone out in podcast land, thanks so much for listening on our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for joining us. This was the first one we've done in a long, long time. Um, things to improve upon is to get Justin over here so that you can, when he talks, you can hear him. Um, I was Googling it um, this morning and last night. Uh, so uh, it's possible we just needed like a third party app integration. A uh, real quick Rex the dog says, thanks for the overview, Frank. I'm glad to hear you're adding features for tracking historical workload and ability to shift adjust future workouts based on life adjustments. Well, actually that is a, a current feature, Rex. You can do that right now. Yeah. So you can, there's two ways you can uh, click the workout, drag and drop on desktop and mobile. You can do that yourself, or you can ask coach cat to do that for you right now. You just got to ask and tell. So everyone, we talk about the best way to use CoachCat is to engage. It's a large language model. It relies on your data and your input. So if you want something, you got to tell CoachCat. Uh, if you have a race or you need a vacation day, you got to tell CoachCat, please give me a vacation day on Friday, January 14th, um, so forth. We have athletes scheduling out. Uh, their whole entire year uh, using Coach Cat right now. And it'll put all that on your training calendar. So anyway, uh, just in case you didn't know that, Rex. But yeah, thanks for listening. But we are going to get Justin on the YouTube side. A uh, little bit of a fail on our part. Uh, so apologies. But for podcast listeners, uh, thanks so much for listening. Um, and we'll be back here next week. Uh, Viva Latour. Who won the stage today, Justin? Do we know? No way. Wow. Number three. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Who was, did he beat Phillipson? Was that? Wow. Was Cavendish anywhere around? Lamar. Uh huh. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Number three. I love it. Well, sorry if we spoiled it for everyone or anyone out there, uh, but I don't really think we did. So we'll be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, you know what to do. Work hard, ride fast, have fun. And as always, FTFP, but know that consistency is the king. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks to Justin for being here. We'll see you next week.